When it comes to living in a vehicle or even just traveling and being on the road for a lengthy amount of time, something I get asked about so, so much is what about mail and what about an address? Like, how does that all work? Start. One of the great things about the day and age that we live in is the internet, right? I mean, you can get almost everything set up to be electronic these days. So when it comes to how do you get your money, like when you get paid, and how do you get your bills, how do you pay your bills, I mean, well, when it comes to jobs, you can get direct deposit, and when you pay your bills, you can sign up for paperless statements, and that way you don't get actual mail, and you can pay those online. At least all of, most of the bills that I have, that's, uh, that's how they work. So to be honest, you can almost get away without actually needing a physical address, but there are some situations where, you know, you can't, you can't really get out of it. And that's gonna be stuff like your car registration or insurance, health insurance, registering to vote, your taxes, anything that's like government kind of documents. And Amazon is one of the greatest things ever, but you do have to have somewhere to ship it to. So I have five suggestions if you are looking for an answer to this where do I get my mail problem. Number one is going to be a P.O. box. Now this does cost a little bit of money and it's not going to be an actual physical street address. So there's lots of documents that specifically say address, not a P.O. box. So this one is good for general packages or if you need somewhere to send junk mail, but not necessarily if you're gonna have to put an address on paper. My second suggestion can be free or cost a little bit of money. It really depends on your situation, but you can always ask friends or family to use their address and get your mail sent there. And you know, offer to compensate them a little bit if they open your mail, if you don't want them to open your mail, you know, you guys can work that out. But typically, if you have a good relationship with your friends and family, they're gonna be okay with you getting your mail sent to their house. However, I know that in my case, it wasn't necessarily that they weren't okay with me having my mail sent there, because I just don't want it to be a burden for them. So it kind of just depends on how you feel and how they feel, and if you have people in your life that you can make that arrangement with. Moving on to number three, when you order anything online, you get to choose the shipping address. So you can pick the closest FedEx, post office, UPS near you and get it shipped there. You can also ship actual packages and everything to a lot of campgrounds. You just have to double check and ask them if they're okay with it. But I want to say at least like eight times out of 10, they're totally cool with that. And anytime that I've done that, it hasn't cost me anything extra. I've obviously just had to pay for my item and the shipping and that's it. And the way that you go about doing that is you get it sent to your name, but then you put care of general delivery. This is how people will be able to mail themselves like care packages when they're hiking the Appalachian Trail or something like that. So it is a really reliable way to receive your stuff. The only downside I see in that is that you either have to, you just have to be really aware of where you're going to be. That way you can get it sent to where you're going to be in the future or you're gonna have to be able to spend a while in one location because if you order something while you're there, then you're gonna have to wait for it. So if that's not an issue for you, then I think this might be a really good option. Although shipping or forwarding your mail and packages to either a campground or a post office is gonna be able to get you your stuff, that still doesn't take care of the address problem. So for that, I would recommend number four, which is a UPS mailbox. So I know when I say that, a lot of people think, oh, a P.O. box. I'm like, no, 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 not a P.O. box. UPS has mailboxes, actual mailboxes, where you can go inside, you have a key, it's yours, and you get all of your mail sent there, and it is a physical street address. Like, literally, if you write it out on paper or type it up and someone looks at it, it's like, oh, okay, you live here. No questions about it. I believe it costs around $30 a month. They do run promotions sometimes, like you get a mailbox for six months, you get the seven month free, and so on and so on. They do stuff like that all the time. But generally, it's around $30 a month, and I really, really like it. I think it's great because it does provide me that street address on any government document that I need, any document at all where it's address and I'm like, dude, I don't even have to sweat it anymore because I have this, it's mine. My fifth and last suggestion would just be to look up virtual mailbox or virtual address. There are tons of companies. Some of them have different services that they offer. Like there is one, what's it called? 
I believe it's ipostal1.com. I'll get the link and put it in the description. They basically do the same thing as UPS and they have an app and what they'll do additionally is they'll scan your mail for you if you choose the option for them to open it. So they'll like scan the envelope so you can see what it is and decide whether you want them to open it. And then if you're like, yes, I want you to open it, then they'll scan it for you. And then you can decide, you can even tell them to, to shred it after you have a copy of it and read it and everything. So they do their best to handle your privacy and you get to choose all of these options. This I believe is like $10 a month, but then they, they kind of charge like a shredding fee, like $2 per envelope and a scanning fee, $2 per envelope. And the reason that I didn't go with something like that versus UPS is because I'm not really going to need to take advantage of those features. I think they're really cool and they could be really helpful for somebody. But in my case, I don't get a lot of actual paper mail. All I really needed was like the physical address and then I just get a lot of packages. So those five are pretty much the only options that I've personally explored. So if you have something else, as always, please leave it in the comments for anyone who's trying to figure out a solution to this whole address and mail thing. But like I said, I definitely recommend all of those. I've tried them all and I like them all, but just for different reasons and really kind of just depends on what you specifically need. However, like I said in the beginning, most of your mail can become like paperless, completely paperless. At least in my situation, the main thing that I had to worry about was just getting that physical address to put on paper when necessary. But again, like how I get paid, how I pay my bills all that stuff is done completely online i hope that helps some of you or at least answers the curiosity questions and i will see you guys next time